So hi, I'm Ian Henderson. I'm a, a sculptor and a jeweler, and I guess I'm mainly here to talk about my line of jewelry, Zoa Chimera, uh, which is, I've got a piece of it here. It's jewelry made of rubber and aluminum. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you'll be able to get a picture of that, but I'm going to hold it up anyway, just for fun. Uh, and it's, it's made of repurposed materials normally used in electronics, mainly insulation tubing and aluminum grounding wire. And the insulation tubing is what allows me to produce these colorful, delicate looking spikes that are actually flexible and soft and durable. This is the material, as far as I know, most people aren't making jewelry out of. Uh, but there is kind of a trend in the jewelry, sort of the fine art jewelry world, to try to find unusual materials and find ways to integrate them into sort of traditional jewelry techniques. Uh, so these are the projects that I guess eventually inspired the line of rubber jewelry. Because I was there to learn metalsmithing, I, I made everything out of overlapping metal plates and you know, sort of using, I guess, the design sensibilities of armor making and also just, uh, you know, insect carapaces and things like that. As jewelry, they, they weren't really practical. Like, this is a bracelet, for example, but there's not too many situations where you'd be able to wear this not even too many situations probably where you'd legally be able to wear this. The stuff that I did um, after I kind of abandoned this type of work and before I started doing this kind of stuff. Prince Takeall, uh, the work that he created that he's most famous for are two books. One's called uh, De Radiolarian and the other one is called Kunstform und der Natur. The book has become a really popular visual reference for artists and designers just to, to look at and to either take inspiration from or sometimes to actually try to copy directly. And so the, the designs that I do are not based specifically on anything in those books, but they, I guess, have a similar visual sensibility. Uh, he was maybe one of the first people to have access, regular access to a microscope, so he studied all these microbes. And I think this was in a time that predated photography, or certainly predated very small scale photography. So he would draw what he saw under the microscope. And so it's really interesting, sort of fractal geometric creatures. They are animals, but they also kind of look like abstract patterns. They, they look like all kinds of things. They're very. Uh, visually stimulating to look at. He drew lobsters and uh, you know octopi and you know all kinds of different sea creatures and things like that. At this point, I'm about halfway through assembling um, what will ultimately look kind of like this piece, although I'm going to have the spines a little more densely packed.